Hello, humans. Welcome to Code with Connor. If this is your first time here. Uh, thanks for coming in. We're going to learn some Python in this video series. So in this is video 1A. So we're going to start Unit 1 by just introducing what Python is, uh, talk a little bit about what you need to do to get set up and get coding. We'll give you a few options so that you can code along uh, with these videos. Uh, and then we'll kind of get rolling from there. If you want to learn more about me, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll post a video about it. But for right now, we'll just stick to the code. So if you're here, you're probably interested in learning something about Python. Maybe somebody told you you can make a lot of money uh, as a programmer. Uh, maybe you just want to know it because you think it's cool and it's got a cool sounding name. Either way, I'm glad you're here. Uh, first thing you're going to need is you're going to need the ability to run Python scripts. Now, I'm going to go through a series of instructions over the next few minutes about installing this stuff on a Windows computer. It'll be a very similar process on a Mac OS or a Linux machine. If you're going to be running this on a Chromebook or a tablet or a phone, you can just check in the in the description of the video and I'll, I'll chapter this thing up. You can skip ahead to the section where I'll talk about some options you can use if you're doing it mobile. Let's get into it. I'm just on Chrome here and I've just gone to the Python website. It's python.org and I clicked on downloads. Okay, so you're going to need to download Python to your computer. So I'm going to download Python 3.91. This is the latest version as of when I'm recording this video. If Python 4 is out when you're watching it, you should probably download Python 3 um, just because I imagine there'll be some major changes as they move from 3 to 4. So make sure you note where you download it. Ba boom Download. Chrome's going to download the file and I'm going to open it up. So it's going to ask me, it, there's one important piece here. When you install this on a Windows machine, because of how we're going to use Python, it's really helpful for us if we add Python as a path, okay? And this is gonna allow us in PowerShell to use the Python command, which is just fantastic. And it makes running our simple programs while we're learning really easy. So we're gonna do that, cool, install now, awesome. There we go, Python's installed, close, awesome. Now, writing your actual Python code you can use an IDE, an integrated development environment. There's large scale ones, there's tiny ones. When I'm writing Python, I'm writing small scripts, I'm teaching people. I don't need the big convoluted debugging tools and all of that. So I'm gonna go to my go-to my go favorite and this is what I'm gonna use in the videos, Notepad++. I love Notepad++. If we hop over here to download, um, you can go in here and you can download the latest version. So here's the 7.88 release, click on that. And then you can download it to your Windows machine. Again, take note of where you download it, and then we're going to run the installer. So I'm going to download the 64-bit installer here. And we'll save it. And we'll launch it. Choose a language. We go next, accept, next, next. And just like that, we are up and running. Bam, there we go. So, Notepad++ is installed. So these two things together are gonna to be our environment. We're gonna write our code in Notepad++, then we're gonna use Python, which is installed on the computer, to actually run it. Now that we have Notepad++ installed, and we have Python installed, we're ready to start kind of writing code. We're gonna write our code in Notepad++. We're gonna use Windows PowerShell to actually run our code. So first time we pull up Windows PowerShell, all we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the Start menu and we're gonna type Power. This is one of many ways to do it. And then once we launch PowerShell, it's gonna look something like this. It's called Windows PowerShell. Now it might bring you to a different drive, obviously, than the one I'm in. So the one thing we're gonna to need to do from an organization standpoint is you're gonna want a folder on your PC where you're gonna save all your Python scripts. So you can make it something simple, like you can navigate to this PC, to your C drive, whatever, uh, and then you can do it that way. So, so on your computer, if you are on your PC and you go to your C drive, this is one of the easiest things. If you just right click and make a new folder, call it like, share, subscribe, right? And then that folder can be where we save all of our Python scripts. So this way it's going to make it easy for us to access it. So if we hop over here to our PowerShell, we can see that if I go to C colon and I hit enter, and then I'm going to use a couple of commands. So I can do cd dot dot. It takes me back one directory. So you'll see I go from my folder back to users. 
can do it again. And now I'm back in C drive. There's another command called CD space and you can put the name of a directory. So like, and I can hit tab at any point. It'll try to autofill it. Like, share, subscribe. I hit enter. And now I'm inside of that folder. So I'm in C colon, like, share, subscribe. And so this is where I'll be when I run commands. If you ever want to clear your PowerShell, you can do CLS and it's gone. Okay, you know, pretty simple set of commands that we're gonna use. You'll, you'll sometimes use cd dot dot, or you'll use cd space and then start typing in a folder name. And then the last command we'll use will be Python, and we'll use that in just a minute. So let's hop over here to our Notepad++ and our PowerShell environments. In Notepad++, we'll go over just a very quick program, and then we're gonna end this video, and then we'll get ready for moving on to the next one where we'll actually dive into stuff a little bit more. So the very first program that we write in the world of programming and software development is always the Hello World program. And it seems to be going on for a long time. Uh, it was the first program I wrote in Java back, I don't know, 20 years ago, and uh, it's still the first program I teach my students. So look something like this in Python. We're gonna type print, and we're gonna open a set of parentheses. Parentheses are our curved brackets. And then in quotation marks, so quotation marks are just left to the enter key on your keyboard. We're gonna write hello world, exclamation point, and we're gonna close our quotation marks, and we're gonna close our parentheses. It's important in coding, and you'll see this if you've learned any HTML or anything before, that what we open, we have to close. All right, so we open the brackets, we open the quotes, we type it, we close, we close. And then we're gonna go through the process of how we run it. So we're gonna save this. So I'm gonna to go to file, and this one time, I'm gonna do save as, but from now on, I'm just gonna do file save. And I'm gonna find my folder, C drive, like, share, subscribe, and we're gonna call this hello world.py. And the .py is important, because the .py is a file extension that tells Windows this is a Python script. It also will tell Python to read it as such. And I hit save. You'll notice my uh, Notepad++ is color coded. Once you save it as a .py, Notepad++ will recognize Python code and help color code elements for you. Until you've saved it, it's not gonna do that. It's just gonna see raw text. So it's helpful to save your files at the beginning so that you get those nice colors uh, to help you kind of organize your code. So now when it's time to run it, we actually will leave Notepad++ and go to PowerShell. And in here, we're gonna type Python space and then we're gonna type the name of the file. And again, we don't type the whole name. We can hit tab at any point that we think we have enough characters to make it unique. And there it is, python hello world.py. And when I hit enter, it prints to the console, hello world exclamation point. So it printed the literal string that was inside of these quotation marks. It didn't print the quotes, it didn't print the brackets. It just printed the characters that were inside of that. So you could change that. You know, we could make that say something else, like share, subscribe, right? And we save our file, hop over to PowerShell, and there it is. It's changed what's being printed. Remember, at any point, CLS will clear our PowerShell window away. So one other thing that is sometimes useful when we're writing our programs is sometimes we wanna put notes in our code that don't actually get executed or run. So we can do a single line comment using a hashtag. So hashtag single line comment, and this will not execute. It won't affect how our code runs. So if I save it, now I'm using Control S to save. You can click File Save. It's all the same. And then I run it. Oops. You'll notice I'm not retyping. Ooh, what am I doing? Ah, it's a crazy shortcut. If I press the up arrow in PowerShell, and I can press it more than once, it'll bring up previously entered commands. So it's a nice way to save some time. Hit enter, and you'll see it didn't affect how the program ran at all. And I can do the same with multi-line comments. So instead, you can use triple single quotes. So these are next to the enter key without holding down shift. Three of them to open, three of them to close. This is a multi-line comment. And you can go as much as you want in between those triple quotes. Again, save and run up, enter. And you'll see it did not affect the execution of the code at all, okay? So as far as your layout goes, you're probably gonna have a PowerShell window and a Notepad++ window. You'll probably be switching between them a lot. Uh, I like to use Alt-Tab on a Windows machine to cycle between them, but again, you can click your way through it. Uh, so this is the setup that I use when I'm on a Windows computer or a Mac computer to do my coding, and this is what I'll be doing in all of my videos. 
Let's just say that you don't have access to that type of system. You still want to code along. I'm going to show you my favorite uh, recommended online IDE that you can use to do this. So let's check it out. So my favorite is a website called CodeHS, C-O-D-E-H-S dot org. And I'll throw a link in the description. On CodeHS, you can go, you can create a free account with Google, and they have a sandbox on CodeHS. And what I love about the CodeHS sandbox, so I can do my hello world, uh, CWC, just so it distinguishes it for the uh, Code with Connor, create program. Now you can code in a lot of languages on here. So the two that we'll use in this video series would be uh, Python 3, and we might look at a couple that involve turtle graphics, which would be the Python turtle. So if I just go to Python 3, create my program, it's going to give me an online coding interface. You'll notice it defaulted to the Hello World program, and I can click Run Code, and it gives me a little display right over here. This is great. It's all self-contained. You could do it in a browser. You could do it on a Chromebook, whatever. And you'll be able to follow along with pretty much everything we do here. You can even have multiple files in a single project if that's your thing. You can even change your editor settings, right? You can throw down like an old school terminal vibe. You can maximize your editor. So another great resource. Now I use this with my students as well because there's some learning tools, uh, amazing learning content built in. Again, not a sponsor, just love the site. So this would be my preferred online IDE if you're gonna follow the course. Uh, I'll make sure things work with this. Obviously there's a, there's a ton of other options out there. There's Replit and there's others. Um, and you're gonna kind of find the one that you're interested in. But that's how I'm going to do it. So in the event that you want to do this without using the Windows setup, this would be my option uh, that I would recommend for you. So that's the end of the first video. Hopefully that makes sense for you. And hopefully that gives you kind of just that initial setup. I didn't really talk much about the language and about programming kind of in a theoretical sense. We'll hit on that a bit more in the next video when we actually start coding, talking about variables and, and really execution and what coding is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the videos, uh, and I hope you enjoy. Comment, and uh, I'll hit you back. Have a great day.